Hello everybody, welcome to POF, POF this year in 2022 to a interview about a very special first feature that we have here in competition. It is Amusia. My name is Christoph Grüner. I'm one of the programmers on the team here at POF and uh, it is my pleasure to welcome the producer Lorenzo Fiuzzi here with me as well as director Mariscotti Ruspoli. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. In a warm television booth in cold Tallinn. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> it's your first time here. Uh, in. Yeah, in a warm booth, <laughs> giving an interview <laughs> and in Tallinn, yes. Absolutely. All of these. So um, uh, I want to start by a kind of uh, small note that you wrote that all started with a white piece of paper and idea put on it and you were going to your producers and to your producer. So this is a very a, a project that at the very first moment brought you two together. I th I, what I know is that you worked for a long time and you were sharing ideas for a long time. So what was the knack about this first feature that we see now? I mean, you know, I've known Lorenzo for, for all my life. And, and since we started working in this industry, we, we've always been bouncing ideas off each other. Especially, I've been bouncing ideas off of him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, so that blank piece of paper, as soon as it was filled up, you know, he was the first the first person I brought it to, because we've always been trying to you know to make something together, and 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 yeah, so I mean, I, you know, it starts and it stops with him. Okay, and uh, so uh, the idea is already in the title. What can you tell about what is at the heart of Amusia? At the heart of Amusia is the discovery of this crazy disease, which has been recently certified which isn't dramatic, but I find it kind of tragic as I'm a massive music fan. Uh, this disease is pretty much an allergy to music, so who suffers from it? This person's brain cannot codify musical pitch. So instead of hearing music, he's hearing a sound distortion. Mm -hmm. So it's not absence of music, it's a presence of an unknown sound that is taking the music's place. Right, and you are, you are uh, uh, putting this into the framework of a, a dialectic framework of two people being very diverse, one avid music lover and one person allergic to that, and you mingle them together in a love story. Yeah, yeah, well, the, the script really, it really developed during COVID, that's when we started really, you know, kind of putting it all together and we were surrounded by you know this dramatic moment and we we, we really didn't feel like making a film that was uh, the story of a tragic disease of a tra of a tragic lifestyle you know we just felt that we wanted to tell talk about it in a different way and in, in a more maybe subtle way so we said listen let's try and place place this illness in it in the world it doesn't belong in, so into a musical world, and that's the, the world of Lucha, you know, who's a guy that, you know, also kind of survives and, and, and finds hope in music. And so, and we said, let's place it there and let's see what happens if, because when I started writing the script, I asked myself this question, I said, if I fell in love with a person and then found out, found out she couldn't hear music, Mm -hmm. What would I choose? <laughs> I would immediately leave. <laughs> but what would I choose? And I said, right. would I choose love or would I choose music? Or would I choose my love for music? And, the love for and, music my, and my answer before I started writing was yes. I would choose music. And then as I started writing, I was like, That's no, not that I mean, a life without music is one thing. A life without love is a way worse thing. And so I said, okay, let's try and just like merge these two kind of this question, merge it and make two characters out of it and that's that's kind of you know the result well you you're talking about the emotive level about the uh, the uh, the level of the sound but of course uh, this is deeply cinematic in its sense for for imagery and uh, luca bigazzi one of the absolute greats was being the dop um now we can first talk about the images but then we have to come <laughs> to the fact that so many high level artists are working on the film so this goes to you both um, how did you 
attract people of that level like Luca Bigazzi to the project, to be part of the project. You know, uh, we can also talk about the actors, but we will do that later on in a moment. Well, on Luca, I would say it's, it's your very personal story. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is a personal story because I've been studying his his way of making, of shooting films for years and years. Now, I read his books and everything. And, and and it's it's a crazy story. I was I was having a meeting in Milan with somebody else and I just saw this person walk past me and I said that just looks like him. Mm-hmm. And I said I was like I I, I just feel and I just I got up, I followed this person, called him, not 100% certain it was him. And it was and I just said, "Listen, I just want to say thank you for for everything you you do for cinema you know you i mean it's terrific you're just so so good i'm i'm an absolute awe of you and i i wish one day to to shoot a, a film with you and he just looked at me and said yeah, send me an email once you've written your first script <laughs> okay that easy and i mean he worked with paulo sorrentino and so on but that's, that's, that's what it happened okay. and and then and we met and i remember the first time the first time i brought in the script he was like, "You gotta go get. Way, it's gotta get way better than this to get me on board," <laughs> which is true. And but but really, he's he's been he's been obviously amazing having him on set. But for me personally, he's been kind of a you know showing me the light in the sense that he's really been helping me out also like with with uh, counseling, you know, right. uh, like kind of saying you know trying to make me push you know raise the bar so say you can it's not good enough and that made me okay let's do better Mm -hmm. do better do better and 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 that installed respect with one another so he's he understood that where i wanted to to go and what i wanted to do and where i wanted to be and that managed to make uh make an equal conversation which for me is an absolute honor because he's the best there is i think right uh, Lorenzo, to to expand on that, this goes also uh, also uh, is true for other departments. These are highest level artists. So, as a producer, again, is it like once you have uh, uh, one kind of that level artist, do the others follow? No, I mean that's of course something mm. producer does. No, it's not that they follow. Like we have been very open, like in in the conversation, the two of us and uh, Bardo Tarantelli, which is the other producer who's flying in tomorrow, uh, today, and um, so the conversation was like, how do we bring this kind of like big talent to a first time film? And the idea has always been, we try. The worst case that can happen, they say no. And so we tried. (laughs) And successfully, uh, I would say. Fortunately, like, luckily enough, like, they liked the script. They always, we always asked, like, to meet them in person because we wanted them to see us and, like, have, like, a talk with them because we can be quite persuasive. So (laughs) I figured that, like... You don't go away. Yeah. He (laughs) he really doesn't go away. (laughs) I'm a nightmare. I don't want to produce this film. (laughs) (laughs) At the beginning, I was like, I'm not ready. And then he's like, okay, I'm pretty sure he's like, Two years after we right. were shooting it, yeah. because he's like, I know you were right. It's like, fine, I'll do it. And uh, but I actually, it's like, it, it grows on you in a certain way. Right. And uh, so with the same with these actors and uh, other talents, like it's like, we, let's try to get these people, and we got them, and they actually were really happy to do, it and they did it, on pretty much of course as favor. And that's that's the thing. I mean, the, this this interview we have. Uh, of course, a limited time, so we have to concentrate it to maybe one person. Because I also wanted to talk about uh, Carlotta Gamba, who was in America Latina beforehand and is one of the rising stars. But I think we have to talk about Fanny Ardon <laughs> if we want to talk about okay, how you yeah. do you get uh, uh, talent of the highest level and so known onto a first feature project. That 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 you know, we were lucky enough to uh, to have her read the script. Um, through our first AD, thanks to our first AD. Okay. And this was two months before we started shooting, I think, a month and a half. Yeah. And I was still, we were still looking for the right actress for that role. And and, and she, I, I received this in, in crazy email one morning, and it was sort of six in the morning email <laughs> saying, you know, I really love the script, can we discuss the character? And I'm like, what the so, yeah, can no I right. swear? Sure. No, I can't swear. <laughs> it's, it's better <laughs> if I well, don't. We're here with but, wolves. But, but, but so, so, 
And so we start talking about the character. Then she was supposed to be on a film who was shooting in Sweden, I think. So it, we couldn't manage to find a way to make it work. And then like a couple of weeks later, she gets back to us and she's like, listen, they pushed the film. Are you still interested? Yeah, you're like, are, you, are we still interested? I mean, we'll come and pick you up we if are. you want. <laughs> right. You're trying to play a very cool. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and, 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 and that's what happened. And I think, again, she just saw great enthusiasm, but also we by then we really knew what we what we wanted to the film to look like we had our you know our visual style we had um we, we knew what we wanted you know i think she saw that in us she saw young we people had a film. it wasn't a piece of paper anymore yeah and and you know working with her all i can say is the most humble and professional person you can imagine like she or she walks you know, silently on set, is always ready, is always so focused in between takes. You can just see that she's working. I mean, she is 100% committed to what she's doing. And that for us is unbelievable because, you know. But as you are, you know, from a piece of paper to a finished film, we have to close off that interview. But people, I think, are getting interested already in Amusia, which is having its premiere here at POF. Thank you so much, Lorenzo and Mariscotti. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank On you. to a great premiere, I hope. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, POF. Thank you. Thank you.